So we're moving to off season, okay? The annual breakdown. So yesterday we went over this, okay? Now we're looking in for the off season, we're looking in these green blocks right here. Start at the beginning, winter block, we go general for a little bit, get the guys back. General for us is really just helping the guys get back from a long season. So we ended our season on the 9th, okay? So we have to just get the main guys back that were playing a lot, get them back fresh and healthy. For some of you guys that play dual sports, I've had this question before, if they play multiple sports and then they're coming right back, how do you do it? These first couple weeks are actually just helping their bodies acclimate, getting back to, into training before they go to the next phase. So it's really maintenance work for us. Again, uh, we're mechanics. So general, specific, getting them ready for spring ball. We have two weeks off, spring ball, that's competition. Transition phase right here, May block is discretionary. Summer block, again, GPP, then specific, camp, Right? You can either say it's pre-competition or you can count it as competition and then you have all season and then bull prep. So right now we're going to talk about winter and a little bit of summer. So this is from yesterday as well. Train year round. Okay? I, I said this before, in season we keep these same things. So all year round I'm going bound, jump, speed, heavy weights, mobility, flexibility. There's a difference. One's loaded, one's unloaded. And then drill work. The heavy weights with the asterisk right you'll see here in season and then parts of here will auto regulate so what we're looking at is we put a tendo or gym wear on it this weight is heavy for that day but it might not be the number on their sheet if that makes sense so on paper if it says i'm supposed to squat 225 pounds today right but my body is hurting and i have to drop down to 200 205 then we're dropping down to 200 205 because that's where your gym wear says you're at for that strength. So now I'm still in my 70% range for that day. Or if I feel great, I can go up to 315. Now I'm actually moving something. High low split is Charlie Francis, Derek Hansen, right? So high day, sprint, jump, throw, low is not an off day for us, right? This is a five day split right here, four day split. You can flip these two either way you want, but we like having a lead in day. So we'll go low day, high day, active recovery. So we're still inside, we're still doing stuff. Low, high. The reason for the lead-in day, I talked about this yesterday. The lead-in day, if you're coming off an off day and you come to sprint, we found out for our guys, and this is different for everyone, but for our guys, if we try to sprint on that day, it's not the best. We need a lead-in day where they're active, they're doing stuff. Then that next day, they have faster numbers. Like yeah, I just get rid of this, right? So get rid of your active recovery. And you go Monday, Tuesday, low here, high on Thursday. Or, and then, I mean, it's up to you. So if you like, Sprinting on Mondays and doing stuff on Mondays first. High, low, high, low, Friday off. All right, so we're talking about high, low. What does that mean to us, right, in the weight room and on the field? So high days. We're looking right here, right? Motor recruitment, we're in the red. So clean and jerk, right, Olympic movements, maximal sprints, explosive med ball throws, plyometrics, right, explosive anti-elastic. They recruit more muscles, so they burn the CNS just a little bit more. Okay, deadlift, RDL, squat, hyper, good morning. Condon's middle range, I would say squat's still kind of on the higher end right here. You could probably say a little bit more over here depending on how heavy we go, right? Bench press, military press, seat row, that's on the lower end. So on the low days, I know we talked, coach talked about total body lifting yesterday. If you guys are going with um, upper lower split, this is what you want on your lower days, upper body, right? So it doesn't strain you as much as going squatting and then sprinting the next day or vice versa. And then curls, triceps, anything else that is small muscle groups, like a bicep, anything you can isolate, calves, you guys can do that every single day. That one won't fatigue anything. All right, so how does that talk about running? So running speed classification, this is Derek Hansen from uh, one of his courses, okay? So high, we're talking about speed 95 to 100%, okay? That's zero to seven seconds, 60 meters. Speed endurance, seven to 15, 80 to 150, right? 95, these are all 95 to 100, special endurance one, special endurance two, and then we get a tempo. So our tempo is there's the medium, right? Coach talked about where this is where mostly where coaches live, right, coach? Uh, when practice, in the medium, okay? Charlie Francis says we don't want to be in the medium too much. We want to be low or high, okay? And then tempos, these are your low ones. A lot of coaches run tempos, two minutes and up, right? So now we're looking at high-low splits. This is how it affects with your running. High days, if you guys are taking a real low day, low day, but we really don't do too much tempos. Yeah, so a lead-in day, I still sprint. 
um, and we'll get there here in a second, but like I still sprint and you can still do accelerations. Accelerations don't burn you out as much as top end work. So I can sprinkle in accelerations multiple days without it really burning me out of getting all the way up to top end work. So we're trying speed. Okay, so my philosophy right here, and everyone else can have their, their different one. Uh, I go short to long. I think it's what most people do nowadays is they go short to long. Um, I don't think there's very many people that go long to short. And then there's short to short, but I don't know anyone that does short to short. Slow to fast. Okay, so when you talk about slow to fast, that could be from footwear to the surface we're running on to the weights we're using to slow us down. So think opposite of the weight room, right? So in the weight room, I want to move the bar quick, and then we start adding weight, and it slows me down. This is vice versa. When you start off, you guys can go heavier weights at the beginning, and as we progress and the guys get better, the intensity increases, lighten the load, and get a little faster, right? And then soft to hard, same thing I talked about surfaces, slower surfaces, right, fast surfaces. That's soft to hard, so grass before turf, right? Does that make sense? And then you can also go, you can say grass before track or the track field. And then shoes. So we go flats. We start in flats often before we go cleats. Cleats are pretty rigid if you guys haven't like tried them and <laughs> really played with them. You know, it's, it's always weird to me that guys come off right away and just go cleats on first. Um, we always went flats first, guys, get the guys ready to go, acclimated to it, and then ease them into cleats. So on our high days, okay? Look, train speed two or three times a week. You guys saw the high-low split. So if you guys are doing it on a five-day split, you potentially have three really good days to get all your speed in with that 24-hour break between. Okay, day one. These are just examples right here, guys. Um, you guys can mix and match however you want, okay? No, I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. I'm just going to tell you guys examples of how to do it um, and what works really well. So day one, accelerations. You can do sports-specific speed, repeat sprints, right? I like On day one, I like to do a little bit more acceleration and resisted, heavy resisted work. So day two, we're talking on Wednesday. So Monday, right, Tuesday's down, Wednesday's comes back up. Sports specific speed, speed or special endurance, or you guys can touch on max velo, okay? And then day three, max velocity, sports specific speed, you can hit A cells again, or repeat sprints. But it's up to you guys how you guys want to theme your days. And I suggest that everyone picks a theme. Coach talked about it uh, yesterday, not mixing these stressors, not mixing your days. It really helps to sit down and then write out what days you want to hit certain things. And then your training in the weight room can also follow that same uh, concept. Jumps, I like matching uh, what speed work we're doing. So if acceleration day, I'm going to go longer ground contact time. Max velo, short ground contact time. Right acceleration, I spend more time on the ground. So we go more broad jumps, broad divert, vert jump. And then bounds and uh, pogo, stuff like that would be on max velo day. Stack the stressors, keep your high intensity movements on the same day. So for us, how we do it, if we're sprinting, we'll probably be squatting, doing our heavier lower body lifts that day, right? We're a total body lift team, so really we'll get most of our heaviest lifts done on the days we sprint. The lower body days, we'll take it off. It'll be a low day and try and get them back, right? Don't, st don't uh, stress the body parts back to back. So I don't want to go sprint max velo and the next day come in squat super heavy or vice versa. You're setting yourself up for failure and injury with the guys. And I say that because there's a couple programs that we've talked to that have actually done that before. So here's a video kind of off-season stuff, right? These work-rest ratios actually work out pretty well for us. Um, they're about, some guys are about six, maybe seven deep on the lines. And all we're doing, it's, it looks chaotic with all these people here. But what actually works out to the work-rest ratio is, is right on cue. And we have heart rate monitors on these guys, so for us, instead of just going off of time, we're looking at their heart rate. So on all these athletes, on the main guys that have the GPS on, we have heart rate monitors on all of them. And once their heart rate comes all the way back down, we start getting them back ready to go again. Right here, this an agility drill getting ready to go. This is an easy one right here if you guys are doing decision making, an easy intro one. We call it a paper clip. You're up, around, coming through to this top cone. Once you get to the top cone, once we do it, I'll be up here, I'll point in the direction, and they'll break it to 45, or they'll break it to 90 and run down it. Um, and then you can extend out the, the finishes longer. So if you're doing a agility drill and you want to get acceleration on the end of it, do an agility drill, throw out the finish cone about 10 yards back. But now, you see as we hit a heavy sled, those sleds are actually ridiculous. It doesn't look like there's, like there's weight on it, but they're actually 145 pounds, and we just put little weights on it because the friction on the ground is actually way heavier, so it makes it 
pretty impossible to move sometimes. And then here we're just working on flowing, staying relaxed. We'll tighten these down even more and put them uh, more narrow before we get into our top end work. And here again, our agility, staying tight to the cone, getting out, and again, I'll be up here, and then once we get through, they've done this before, we'll tar start doing change of directions. So they gotta look, locate, find me, decision making. So on low days, it's not a day off for us. Um, a lot of guys wanna go take days off. They think that's what a low day is, but it's not, right? You still train the body. We picked exercises and drills that don't stress the same body part as it, the body as much as the same, or yesterday, right? So I'm not gonna come back and hit max velo again, right? We'll do different things. In the off season and winter, like right now, carries, we do strongman stuff. Um, and that's, that's mainly for the bigger guys. The smaller guys, I understand we don't need this as much, right? So the, for our smaller guys, we'll get away from it. They'll be running, sprinting more of that, and they'll be doing um, different types of intensive tempos or different types of little acceleration sprints and drills rather than doing this. But for our bigs and combos, the strongman stuff has paid dividends for us. Drill and technique work, still on the, your low days, right? Fundamentals, over and over again. Never leave. It's a good capacity work as well. So it's two for one right there. We still train the weight room, right? And then like we just talked about, I still do a number of starts, jumps, and throws. I just limit how much the volume I do. The intensity is still there. It's just I limit the amount we do. And then metabolic running, one thing I found out is pretty cool. Um, it's not the same thing as normal tempos. So you guys can use metabolic running. There's different variations of it. Uh, I got this from the Carolina Panthers. One of the ones that they do is they go, it's, you can go off the whistle. It's a movement, then you change the movement, then you have a third movement. So an easy one is stride, karaoke stride, right? You go backpedal, shuffle to stride. You can do whatever you want, but that's good prep for uh, change of direction. So if you guys need an easy prep for change of direction, if you guys start doing this, it's huge. One thing the athletes that we found out is the reason they get injured is they lack rotational ability. Once you lose the ability to rotate well, as an athlete on the field, you're setting yourself up for failure and injury. So this helps out a lot with it. Next part about that is you can increase the intensity. Forwards, backs, right? It almost becomes, it looks like a shuttle, but just change direction. A series, we touched on this yesterday. I'm a big drill guy. The A series for me has been money, right? So you have March, working posture, switch, replace, A1-2, A1-2-3. Again, for the, I, I know this is a kind of review for those of us that were here yesterday. This doesn't leave us. This is something we do. We throw in our warm-up. So how we do in the off season, in the normal season, it's in the warm-up, and we'll pull guys separate and do a more intense version of it for guys that need the work. Off season, we'll go warm-up, and we'll have a split-off section where we do all technique work so we can watch uh, everyone go.